Welcome to my presentation Usage of Autonomous Mobile Robots, Outdoors and Exomatic Design Approach. My presentation is divided into the following four sections. I will start with the initial situation. Here I will explain the current situation and the problem. Then follows the state of the art, where we have conducted a systematic literature review and semi-structured interviews. This is followed by the methodology. As the title of the paper already indicates, we used axiomatic design. As conclusion and result, I will present the design guidelines for the implementation of outdoor animals. On this slide, we see the annual unit sales of mobile robots in logistics from 2018 to 2023. It is expected that by 2023 almost 740,000 units of logistics robots will be in use. Those an annual sales growth of 30 to 40 percent is expected until 2023. Robots in logistics are still the growth drivers. The majority of the mobile robots currently in use within logistics are located inside of holds. Examples of this can be seen on the upper right side of the slide. These mobile robots are automated or autonomous driveless vehicles, in short AGVs or AMRs. In the outdoor area, fewer AGVs and hardly any AMRs are used compared to the indoor area. A typical location for outdoor AGVs are port terminals, as shown here in the example of the port of Hamburg. Some pilot projects, such as the auto trailer from Stolpe WFT, which is being tested at BMW, represent an outdoor AMR. However, why are there only few uses of outdoor AMRs? Before I clarify this question, I would like to explain the differences between AGVs and AMRs. Like AGVs, AMRs are driveless transport vehicles. However, AMRs have advanced capabilities such as independent action with environment or independent decision making. For example, in route planning, AGVs follow a physical or virtual guideline. AMRs, on the other hand, know their starting point and destination, but plan their route independently. Now back to the initial question, why are there fewer outdoor AMR implementations? Some reasons are listed in a lower part of the slide. As you can already guess, the technology that affects both the sensors and the accurators is much more complex than in the AGV. Furthermore, in the outdoor area, the weather and road conditions and the additional traffic of trucks and cars must be considered. Challenges arise, such, such as snow, rain and wet road surfaces, which do not occur in indoor applications. In addition, there are fewer applications and consequently less experience with AMRs in the outdoor area. Furthermore, many of the norms and standards are exclusively for indoor AGVs, but not for outdoor AMRs. Therefore, there is a lack of knowledge, methods and procedures. To counteract this problem, we have scanned the current state of the art and science with the help of the SLR in semi-structured interviews. Based on the information of the SLR and the interviews, we then generate customer needs for the implementation of outdoor AMRs. The basis of the SLR is the electronic database Scopus. The keywords refer to title, abstract and keyword of the respective publication. The selection process is divided into three stages. The first level represents the delimination through automation. The second level limits the intersection to its application in an industrial logistic environment. And the third level 
reduces the number of works to be exchanged to those containing the key criteria. Bowl and comments link these respective levels. The search is limited to the publication period from 2015 to 2020. The subject area is limited to first, material science, second, decision science, and third, management, economics, and accounting. After elimination, 12 papers are left. These 12 papers have been examined again and classified according to high relevance, low relevance, and no relevance. Finally, we were able to reduce the intersection again to six papers. From these six papers, we were able to drive customer needs for the implementation of outdoor air maps. As a further source of input for the customer needs, we conducted semi-structured interviews. These took place between November 2018 and January 2019. In total, we talked to 24 experts from the field of innovation, automation and logistics. One part of the survey dealt with the requirements of the implementation of outdoor AMRs. These requirements can be divided into five areas in localization and navigation, perception, safety, efficiency, and last but not least, in the process. We now see on this slide the result of the SLR and the semi-structured interviews. The two input sources were brought together and key customer needs were then drived. These are of great importance for the further course of the work, especially for the axiomatic design methodology. The customer needs can be classified. For example, the need drive outdoors on the factory premises, mastering different weather and road conditions, refers to the technology of the robot. And the need ensure human safety and avoid collisions refers to the safety of the system. At this point, I would like to briefly introduce the axiomatic design methodology. Axiomatic design is a systematic method for the design of complex systems or even processes. N. Su developed this method in the late 1970s at MIT. According to Su, axiomatic design is based on four domains, which can be seen on the slide on the left. Today, we are looking especially at the first three domains. We have already been able to filter out the customer needs with the help of the SLR and interviews. Now, functional requirements, in short, FRs, are derived from the customer needs, also known as customer attributes, short CAs. You can see this on the right side. A FR was derived from each CA. For example, for the first CA, drive outdoors on the factory premises, mastering different weather and road conditions, the FR1 is locate and navigate autonomously and robustly under outdoor conditions on the factory premises. After driving the FRs, the third domain follows, which shows the design parameters, short DPs. As you can now see on this slide, the DPs were determined by mapping and decomposition. As this top-level decomposition FRDP tree shows, a DP was formed for each FR. We have also added design fields to the overview. These design fields are divided into technical feasibility, security management, order management, process management, and economic efficiency. Since FRs and DPs are still very general on the top level, axiomatic design's goal is to continue mapping and decomposition until an FR corresponds exactly to a DP. In this work, we have initially gone 
down to two levels. I would like to show you the example of the first design field, technical feasibility of second level decomposition. The DP1, technical feasibility check of vehicle components and software, has now been broken down into further functional requirements. Design parameters and solutions have been created for each of these sub-requirements. The same was done for the other four design fields 2 to 5. Finally, we were able to drive high-level planning steps for the implementation of outdoor AMRs by mapping and decomposition. In summary, you can see these planning steps as a guideline in the figure on the right side of the slide. Accordingly, the high-level planning steps are a technical feasibility check, a comprehensive safety system, an advanced planning system, a process analysis and a cost calculation. The first planning step in the implementation of an outdoor AMR is the technical feasibility check. That includes the following sub-steps. First, a technical suitability test. Second, high quality environment maps. And third, environmental perception and understanding. Road and weather conditions require robust and suitable mechatronic components of the vehicle. Therefore, technical suitability tests of hardware components for outdoor usage should be implemented. High quality environment maps with robust and accurate localization allow stable outdoor usage. An AMR interacts autonomously with the environment. Thus, it is mandatory to use sensor technology for perceiving and understanding the environment, including all actions within the lab. Interacting autonom autonomously also depends on the two previously mentioned points, technical suitability tests and high-quality environment maps. Further research is certainly needed to further decomposition DPs to be able to show more detailed planning steps afterwards. However, this guideline offers a first basis for the implementation of outdoor AMRs. Thank you very much for your attention. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.